What is up everybody, my name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a pressure washing mistake that'll make your customers angry and it'll actually make them call you back and uh, it just won't be a good situation for you because they're gonna be dissatisfied with the service when in reality you might've done actually a pretty good job. So this big mistake revolves around watering. So anytime that we are pressure washing a house, we are using chemicals, we run the risk of those chemicals damaging things that we don't want them to damage. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at an instance where uh, we were spraying some chemical up on a house, the chemical came down and it hit the grass and we didn't rinse it properly. And I'm gonna show you guys the after effect of that. But if you guys are looking to start a pressure washing business and you don't know about the chemicals, how to mix them, the proper procedures for cleaning every service on a residential job site, as well as the equipment, job walkthroughs, and much, much more, Check the first link in the comment section and description. That's going to be a link to the how to wash course. And in there, we go over everything that you need to know in order to be the most efficient and effective pressure washing business in your area. In today's video, though, we are going to be taking a look at a training that we recently did uh, with a guy out of Texas. He wanted to see a roof wash on the day we actually did a commercial cleaning with him. So we got to see a commercial building as well as concrete cleaned uh, at the commercial building and uh, some other aspects of commercial property cleanings, which I'm going to be showing you guys in a separate video. But he also wanted to see a roof wash. So we didn't have a roof wash scheduled for this day. So we took him to uh, one of Kel's family members' houses and we specifically did not water everything um, at the end like we should have because we wanted to show them the effects of not watering properly. We did a pre-rinse, we just didn't do a post-rinse, and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like uh, in today's video. Now, if you're curious and wanna learn more about in-person training, that'll be the second link in the comment section description, but I got three tips for you guys with regards to avoiding this mistake with your customers so that way they don't call you back. And tip number one is gonna be to water before, water during, and water after. So like I said in the beginning of the video, anytime we're using chemicals, we are running the risk of damaging um, property, damaging plants, damaging things that can be, you know, stained, wood, uh, things of that nature. So we want to make sure that we're doing our proper due diligence with regards to watering, watering everything. So water before, water during, and water after, and you shouldn't have any problems with anything. And if you're not sure if something should be watered, just go ahead and do it anyway. It's better to err on the side of caution than it is to take a risk and um, run the risk of someone having to call you back or you having to replace something because it was damaged by chemical. Now, tip number two, you guys might be asking, Justin, how do I water during a cleaning if I'm doing the cleaning? And tip number two is use a sprinkler. So if you're a one man crew, you're by yourself on the job, run a sprinkler. I learned this from Mike. Mike only runs one man crews and they do plenty of roof washes and things of that nature. And the way that he does it is he trains them to use a sprinkler when they're washing. So that way the sprinkler's working, it's watering the vegetation as well as the yard and everything else that needs to be watered while you are doing the cleaning, applying the chemical and uh, just making sure that everything's getting watered during and then obviously they're able to do the watering after. So tip number one, water before, during and after. Tip number two, use a sprinkler if you're a one man show. Last tip I have for you guys is some people like to cover the plants and cover the vegetation with uh, plastics. Now, if you do cover plants, uh, only do so for a short time period because the plastic can actually act, act as a hot box for the plants. It can overheat them and it can hurt them as well. So, you know, our goal is to mitigate any damage to the plants or the property. So the last thing we want is to leave plants in plastic for too long and they end up dying anyway, when our only goal was to just keep them alive. So tip number three, if you do use plastic, only use it for a very short amount of time. It will help. It will help you if you are a one-man show. You won't have to move move the sprinkler around. However, like like I said before, you run the risk of hot boxing them and actually uh, doing damage to the property when. In reality, you intended not to. So if you guys made it this far in the video, comment down below water. That will be our word of the day because water is your best friend, especially when you're using chemical. But if you guys are curious about how to wash course, first link in the comment section description. If you want to do some in-person training, if you want to do some pressure washing or parking lot striping, check out the second link. We got classes in Baton Rouge as well as Savannah, Georgia. Um, so that's pretty cool. And if you guys have any questions, leave those down in the comment section below. Short video today. I just wanted to share this with you guys because um, you know it was just something we were testing out. Let's see what it looks like if we don't rinse after we do a roof wash and uh, it looks pretty bad. Subscribe to the channel, but my name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed. Until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace.